Let's start out by looking at the very first problem from your homework. This is chapter 35, number two. We'll solve this with ray tracing and the thin lens equation. This is your first example of uh, an optical system with two or more elements. In this case, a converging lens and a diverging lens. Before I jump into the problem, perhaps we should take a look at a graphic from your book. So give me a moment. All right, here's a, an optical system composed of two converging lenses. We'll call this lens number one. This lens is going to form an image of the object over here. The object is a little pine tree. You can see the, the dark purple rays. Those are what I call the principal rays. They all converge at this point over here. So this little real image, notice, notice that it is a real image because the rays are converging there. This real image is the is the image formed by the first lens, but those rays will then diverge from this point and enter the second lens. So as far as the second lens is concerned, uh, these rays really do diverge from some point that's considered to be the object for the second lens. The image from the first lens becomes the object for the second lens. That's a common theme in a lot of these problems. And make sure that, that you're, uh, clear on that conceptually, it really doesn't matter whether these rays diverged because they originally converged after refracting through this lens or whether they were diverging from an actual object. That makes no difference to this second lens and that means it makes no difference to the person's eyeball over here. Okay, so you can then uh, draw a new set of principal rays emanating from this image. This is now the object for the second lens. And that will show that the, the image formed by the second lens is way the heck over here. And that's a virtual image. How do we know? Well, they've drawn these dotted lines. That helps us recognize that we're talking about a virtual image. But the main thing is that the, um, the rays don't actually converge there. They appear to be diverging from there. So the first lens forms a real image. The second lens lens forms a virtual image. And your book makes a very important point in the first couple pages. The principal rays that you use for the second lens do not have to correspond to the principal rays in the first lens. In fact, in general, they won't match. They won't be the same. Notice if you, if you take um, these two principal rays and extend them, they are not principal rays for the second lens. So don't even worry about making those principal rays match. You just start off. Remember, the principal rays are just three among practically an infinite number of rays that you can imagine converging to point P prime and then diverging from point P prime. It also doesn't matter that this ray would not in fact pass through the lens. I mean, if the lens only has this extent, this ray would not be re refracted in actuality because it's not passing through the glass. That's irrelevant. We only use these rays to figure out where the image is located. Um, you can see all these other rays that they've drawn that would, in fact, refract through the second lens and appear to be di diverging from a point back here. So uh, uh, image from the first lens forms or serves as the object for the second lens. And you could continue that process with any number of lenses, presumably. In this problem, we've got a converging lens with an object to the left of that, and then there's a diverging lens over here. And we're supposed to uh, yeah, use both methods. So I would start by drawing your optical axis. And I went ahead and chose this scale. I'm going to let one centimeter with my ruler represent 10 centimeters in real life, so to speak. That's one way to put it. Because the distances involved in this problem are rather large. The two lenses are 160 centimeters apart. Well, this pa paper is nowhere near 160 centimeters. That's, that's almost two meters. So we'll have to scale things down horizontally. We can actually choose a different scale vertically. That doesn't, the vertical scale has nothing to do with the horizontal scale, which is a little surprising. We're told that the object is, uh, I'll just draw an arrow. It's supposed to be 60 centimeters in front of the first lens. So I first need to allocate six centimeters here to represent that 60 centimeters between the object and the lens. So 
I will draw a vertical line. I'm doing my best to make the vertical line perpendicular to the optical axis. And they tell us that the object is two centimeters tall. Again, I don't need to use this scale for vertical distances. So I will just leave that two centimeters as two centimeters. Okay, so here's my object. Maybe it's a tree, <clears throat> maybe it's a dog, maybe it's a stop sign. Maybe it's somebody you're spying on from a great distance, you pervert. Um, Let's see here, the focal length we're told for the first lens is 40 centimeters. It's converging lens, so that's a positive focal length. Uh, four centimeters on my ruler represents 40 centimeters in real life. So focal point, focal point. Okay, and before I start drawing rays, I should figure out where the second lens is. I don't wanna draw these rays actually passing through the second lens. So since the second lens is 160, centimeters from the first lens, I'll go with 16 centimeters on my ruler. This vertical line represents the second lens, which is diverging. And we're told that it has a, a focal length of negative 40 degrees. So the same magnitude focal length, but different sign. We know, we know it's gotta be a negative number because it's a diverging lens. And if I recall, I only actually need one of these focal points, but I'll draw them both just in case. Okay, this part is not necessary, but if you want, you can sketch a converging lens and sketch a diverging lens. But remember, do not make your principal rays refract at the lens surface. The refractions should happen at the vertical plane that you've used to represent the lens. Your diagram is not going to come out right at all. And I'm sorry, my lenses are displaced slightly from each other. Okay, let's figure out what this optical system does. We've got one principal ray that comes in parallel to the optical axis. It refracts at the vertical line through the focal point. And I don't need to go all the way over here. I can always extend this line later if I need to, but I'll stop over here somewhere. We've got the, the ray which passes through the center of the lens. That ray is undeviated, as your book says. And we've already located the image. It's going to be a real image. It's inverted and it's enlarged. The last ray we can draw, wouldn't that be the one that goes through the first focal point and then comes out parallel? Okay, that came out pretty nicely. All right. Is it any surprise that we have a real image here, a real inverted image? It shouldn't be because we've placed the object outside the focal point of the first converging lens. We know that an object outside the focal point creates a real inverted image. Now we've got this object, which appears to be outside the focal length of the diverging lens. Well, I don't think there's any special significance to that for a diverging lens. Whether the object is outside or inside the focal length of a diverging lens, you get a virtual image either way. Now this one's a little trickier. Remember the, the principal rays are different. Now I'm not going to try to use these as my principal rays. This one I think actually would work, yeah because it's already coming in parallel. So do you remember what this parallel ray will do? When it gets to the lens, the diverging lens, it will diverge as if it came from this focal point. So I will draw a ray going outwards as if it came from the near focal point. So I may as well put some dotted lines here. I hope that's far enough. What about the other rays? What are the other two um, principal rays for a diverging lens? Well, you can all, you always use the one that goes through the center that is undeviated. So I've only drawn three rays, but remember there are any number of rays converging here and then diverging. Let's use the one that would diverge off in this direction so that it passes through 
undeviated. Okay, and that should be enough to, uh, to locate the image. For somebody's eyeball over here, it looks like these rays are diverging from this common point. And to confirm that, we should draw our third ray. That's the one that's going to be the opposite of this one. If it came in parallel and went out, imagine a ray that, uh, let's see here. Yeah, this is the one where you aim for the focal point on the other side. So I actually did need to, to mark both focal points for this diverging lens in order to draw the three principal rays. So one of the other rays, if it's headed towards the focal point on the other side, remember that this lens is a diverging lens. I just think it will tend to diverge this ray. It will come out parallel to the optical axis as if it came from back here. And remarkably, all three of these rays do intersect at this common point. So all these rays coming out, this is not a ray, this is the optical axis, but this one, this one, and this one, to, to somebody's eyeball over here, or to another lens, it appears as if all these rays are diverging from here. We've located the final image. It's upside down, it's virtual, and it's reduced in size. So, using the ray diagram, I've already done most of the work, let me determine now S2 prime, what's the final image distance? Uh, or how about we just do everything in order here? S1, well that was given to us, that's the 60 centimeters. S1 prime, well, that's the op excuse me the image distance for the first lens on my ruler that comes out to be uh, I'll call it 10.9 well remember our our lateral scale 10.9 would be a is that 109 centimeters in real life okay what's s2 what's the object distance for the diverging lens that's the distance between the image I just looked at, which is now my object, and the second lens, that looks to be exactly five centimeters on the ruler, which would be 50 centimeters in real life. Image distance, S2 prime. Well, it's, an, it's a virtual image, so we already know that the image distance for lens two needs to be a negative number. And to me, it looks like it's about 2.2 centimeters times 10, that'll be 22 centimeters with a minus sign. Okay, now what about the final height? Well, I suppose we could find this height as well. Uh, H1, the original height was given to us as two centimeters. Remember for the vertical distances, I don't need to correct with the scale. H1 prime, B, the image height from the first lens, that's four, negative four centimeters as a matter of fact, because it's on the flip side. And H2, well, the height of the object for the for a second lens, that's the same as the height of the image for the first lens. So I can just repeat that as negative four centimeters. H2 prime, what's the image height for the diverging lens, the second lens? That looks to be, 1.8 thereabouts. So I'm going to call that negative 1.8 centimeters. And I already suspect that that's not going to match up with what we get from the thin lens equation. But remember, they don't have to match perfectly. There's error introduced by the finite thickness of your pen, the fact that you're not really using a protractor to get these parallel lines, etc. Okay, let's let's now use the thin lens equation. Or lastly, we could do this. Um, Magnification one, that would be H1 prime over H1. So negative four centimeters over two centimeters. So the first lens scales your object up by a factor of two and flips it upside down. That looks about right. This is about double 
the length of that and it's upside down. Remember that's supposed to also be negative S1 prime over S1 as a check. Now, is that actually the case here? S1 prime, and I realized I kind of, here I was going uh, lens one across a row, lens two across a row, and then I switched to column. Sorry about that, it's a little confusing. S1 prime over S, so 109 divided by 60, 1.8, I left out the minus sign. 1.8 is not quite the same as two, so remember, um, Thin lens equation will give you more exact results than the lens or the, uh, the ray tracing. M2, negative S2 prime over S2. That's supposed to be the same as the second magnification, but that should also be H2 prime over H2. So that's negative 1.8 over negative 4, which is 1.8 divided by 4. 0.45, which is close to 0.5. So this lens scales your, your uh, image from the first lens, which is now the object for the second lens. It scales it down by a factor of almost one half. And there's no minus sign here because it does not flip it again. It's upside down here, it's still upside down here. Okay, the total magnification off to the side here, we'll just call it M instead of M, instead of M totes. That would just be the product of the two. For instance, if one lens doubles it and the other lens triples it, overall the magnification would be six. In this case, we've got uh, negative two times 0.45. How about I just round that to 0.5? Negative two times one half. That's roughly negative one. So the overall effect on the size of the object would be to just flip it upside down and leave its its height unchanged. That looks about right. This is about the same height as this. This one's just upside down compared to this one. Let's confirm all of these results now with the thin lens equation. Shouldn't be difficult. <clears throat> okay. Well, since we're solving for image distance first, if you solve the thin lens equation for image distance, one over S1 prime should be one over F1 minus one over S1. And I'm going to do this all in one step in my calculator. The focal length was 40. So I'll say 40 reciprocal button. Come on. 40 reciprocal button minus the object distance of 60 reciprocal button equals, don't forget to hit that reciprocal button one more time, an image distance of 120. Cool. Well, that's uh, it's not that cool because from the ray diagram, I got 109. That's what, 10% off from the actual result? Where did I go wrong? I don't mean in life, that's a longer discussion. I'm talking about this diagram. Well, this ray doesn't look particularly parallel to this ray. So if you're more careful, you'll get slightly better results. Hmm, and that means, um, remember H1 prime, the image height, as far as the first lens is concerned, that would be, the first magnification times the object height for the first lens, which would be negative S1 prime over S1. Remember, magnification is supposed to be equal to this, times H1, and that would be negative, okay, well, 120 centimeters compared to 60 centimeters times the initial object height of two centimeters. Yeah, the magnification is two, two times two should be negative four, centimeters. And that I actually did recover using the ray tracing. Same result. That's satisfying. Oh, all right. Now S1, S2, sorry, the object distance for the second lens. And for that, we can go back to the diagram. I didn't actually label it, but remember these two lenses are 160 centimeters apart. And we just found that the image from the first object, or the first lens, comes out 120 centimeters from the first lens. So 160 minus 120 would give us 40 centimeters from the distance between the, what's, what I'm now going to call the object and the lens. So we'll go with 160 
minus 120 centimeters, and that's 40. And that is positive. It's still a positive object distance because the, uh, the object is on the incoming light side. This is hard to visualize until you see an example, but there actually are times when your object would be on the other side of the diverging lens. In fact, just think of it this way. What if you scooted, scoot? What if you scoot this object closer to the focal point? Hopefully you remember that this image would go farther and farther away from the lens. In fact, if you put this close enough to the focal point, this image would be on the other side. So the rays that converge to make this image would actually reach this lens before they converge. And if that's the case, your object distance for lens two would be a negative number. So there are situations in which S2 would be a negative number. In this case, the object for the second lens really is on the incoming light side. That's a positive number. Okay, let's find the location of the image for the second lens. It's the same equation as before. One over S2 prime would be one over focal length two minus one over object distance two. And don't forget, for a diverging lens, the focal length is negative. So I won't write those numbers out. I'll say 40, is it 40 centimeters? Yes, 40 centimeters with the minus sign, reciprocal button, minus the object distance, which is positive 40, just a coincidence that they're both 40, Recipro reciprocal button equals, and then take the reciprocal of that, and I find negative 20 centimeters. Whoops, this is sloppy. This is, uh, what I meant to say is, this means that the object distance is negative 20. This is not one over S2 prime, this is S2 prime. Why is it a negative number? Because it's a virtual image. Anytime your image distance comes out negative, it tells you that the image is a virtual image. And we can confirm that with the ray diagram. The rays appear to be diverging from here. They don't actually converge there. Now, how does that check out with what we got from the, the ray diagram? Negative 20 centimeters, okay. I found negative 22, very close. Better than I could hope for. And so we'll say this now, the total magnification would be M1 times M2. How much does the first lens scale up your object by? How much does the second lens scale it by? And that would be negative S1 prime over S1 times negative S2 prime over S2. Okay, let's just plug in those numbers. We've got the, uh, the original image distance was 120 compared to the object distance of 60. And then the final image distance was negative four. So negative, negative would be positive four over, wait a minute, I'm screwing this up. That would be, um, I'm sorry, that's the height. It's negative 20. So it's negative, negative would be a positive 20. This is 20 here over. And what's the object distance for the lens two? That would be the 40 centimeters. Okay, so negative two times one half is indeed negative one. Remember, I kind of fudged that over here. I rounded that 0.45 to 0.5. And let's just check here that everything's consistent. We should also be able to compute magnifications using the ratio of the heights. So image height for the first lens over object height times image height for the second lens over object height for the second lens. Well, it's difficult to keep all these subscripts straight. All right, well, the first image came out negative four centimeters tall. Negative four centimeters compared to the original two centimeters, fine. And I see that I neglected to calculate H2 prime. You know what, I'm kind of going, going around in circles here, aren't I? Because uh, what did I use to calculate the image height from the first lens? I used the fact that the magnification is equal to the ratio of the object and image distances. So of course I'm gonna get the same answer down here. This is a waste of time. I'm so sorry I wasted your time and my time. I'm even more sorry about that. 
Okay, so there's no need to do that calculation twice. But it is satisfying that the results of the thin lens equation closely match those of the ray diagram. And remember, that's no coincidence. You can prove that it has to work out that way. They're, they're equivalent. The thin lens equation is equivalent to this, to this geometrical method using the principal rays. I mentioned just a moment ago that this, the uh, image distance, excuse me, the object distance for the second optical element, whether it's a lens or a mirror, can sometimes be negative. And I'd like to do an example of that here. So I just picked some numbers that should work out on the page. I've got a converging lens with a positive focal length. I put the object outside the focal length. The object is seven centimeters from the first lens. That's outside the five centimeter focal length. The, the uh, actual object is three centimeters tall. And then there's a second lens over, over here somewhere with a, it's a diverging lens with a focal length of negative four. So let me first draw the lenses. I need seven centimeters. And notice I've, I've picked numbers so that I don't need to use a, a scale here. Let's put the object seven centimeters outside the first lens. I really hope this fits. Here's lens number one. And my object height, three centimeters. Good enough. My focal length, five centimeters. Let me draw a focal point on either side of the first converging lens. Okay. And the lens to lens distance I decided was 12 centimeters. So from the first lens to the second lens, there's my 12 centimeters. This vertical line will represent the diverging lens. I guess I could quickly sketch a converging lens, a diverging lens. But remember, your rays are not going to refract at these curved surfaces. They only refract at the vertical plane. Okay, four centimeters is the focal length of the diverging lens. One on either side. Let's draw this thing. Three principal rays for the converging lens. Parallel ray. I have trouble with this because I've got my camera mounted on a lamp and the lamp is right in front of my face here. So this ray will refract through the focal point over here. And again, I don't know where these are going to intersect. So I'm gonna make this ray go all the way to the edge of the paper. Normally I wouldn't do that because I don't want to clutter up the picture too much, but I have a feeling that these rays are going to converge somewhere over here because I picked the numbers so that they would do that. And you can already see when I go to draw the undeviated ray from the tip of the object, let's see, undeviated, it is not going to intersect the, the first ray until they're clear on the other side of the diverging lens. You can already see why the object from the first lens, which is the image, ah, I keep screwing that up. The image from the first lens, which is the object for the second lens, that object is on the outgoing light side. So this object distance, S2, is going to get a minus sign. That's the first time I think you've seen that. What's the last ray that I can draw? The one that would go through this focal point would come out parallel. Let's see here. Can I even do that? I'm going to have to extend the vertical line representing the lens all the way to the edge of the paper. Okay. And now when I go through the focal point, once I arrive at the lens, I refract out parallel. And of course, I'm going to cheat and make sure that it really does go through the previous point. Yeah, this looks perpendicular to the, uh, oops, this does look perpendicular. That's fine. Okay. Whoa, what am I supposed to do now? How do I draw 
the rays for the second lens. Aye. I'm going to pause and think about it. Well, I'm glad I paused for a moment so I didn't embarrass myself. I'm still going to embarrass myself, but not as bad as if I left the camera rolling. Here's what I came up with. We determined, or I determined, that this first lens produces an image of this object. The image is located over here on the other side of the diverging lens. So I, I was just thinking I really should have drawn these rays dotted because they don't make it through this lens without being deviated. I should have drawn these dotted. And we have three possible principal rays we can draw for the diverging lens. The easy one would be an undeviated ray. We need a ray that would have come out of this lens so that it's headed straight for the image point and it goes through the center of the diverging lens. A ray going in this direction would, would reach the image point from the first lens and it would also go through the center of the second lens, which means it would be undeviated. So this is one of my principal rays for the diverging lens. Now, the, the unrealistic thing about that is this ray could not have actually come from this lens. You know, any, um, any ray going way up there just would miss the lens entirely. And even if the lens did extend all the way up there, it wouldn't be able to refract array that much to come down here. But remember, we're idealizing the behavior of the lens. So just imagine a lens that's really big and actually does have perfect refracting properties for a thin lens. It could take a ray that goes up to the edge of the lens, bend it all the way back down towards the image point, and that ray would be undeviated on its way through the diverging lens. Okay, the other two are more difficult. Here's how I reasoned. This ray that comes in parallel once it gets to the diverging lens, I should have made this dotted um, because what, what it would actually do is then diverge down in this direction. I ran out of room. It would diverge as if it came from this focal point of the diverging lens. Remember, that's what diverging lenses do. They take incoming parallel rays, parallel to the optical axis, that is, and diverge them as if they came from one of the focal points. So these two rays alone would be sufficient to locate the, um, the uh, image from the second lens. And I find that those two would be way, they'd intersect way over here. And I, <laughs> I even had to paste a piece of paper to the first one so that I could draw it and then discovered that wasn't enough. So I had to paste a third piece of paper now, if I wanted, I could get out my ruler and figure out how far this lens is from this point over here. And that's a rather large distance. So before I bothered to measure that, I checked these results with the thin lens equation. So first I figure out where is this image in terms of the first lens. I plugged in the object distance of seven centimeters. I plugged in the focal length of five. Here's what I find. The image from the first lens should be 17 and a half centimeters from the first lens. And I can check that with my ray diagram. I find just shy of 17 centimeters. So my, my ray diagram doesn't match the thin lens equation all that well. I think it's because I wasn't very careful in drawing this, this line parallel to the optical axis. Okay. Well, if these, if this is 17 and a half, and a half centimeters, but the lens to lens distance is 12, then this would be five and a half centimeters. This image would be five and a half centimeters to the right of the diverging lens. So that means my, my object distance for the diverging lens would be five and a half with a minus sign. Remember, that's the weird thing about this problem, that the object is on the, like the wrong side of the, the lens, so we have to give it a minus sign. That's where I came up with this, negative five and a half. And then I solved for the image distance for this diverging lens, the second lens. Same thing, one over focal length minus one over object distance, take the reciprocal of that, and I get negative 14.6. So according to my thin lens equation, these, these rays should appear to be diverging from a point 14.6666, et cetera, centimeters to the left. Um, and I know it's to the left because it's a virtual image. It's a, it's a negative, 
image distance. The rays are not actually converging anywhere. They appear to be diverging from some point back here. So I should have found that these two rays intercept at some point above this zero mark here. See how I've, I've lined this up so it says 14.6 centimeters between the lens and the image from that second lens. And I do not find that result. I find that they converge somewhere farther off. So I think what's happened here is that this ray tracing method is very sensitive to small errors. So what I'll do is pause this video. I'm gonna tweak the numbers a little bit. I'm gonna to try to put the image from the first lens farther to the right so that these lines are um, not so steep and see if I can actually recover the results of the thin lens equation. So I will pause. That way if I screw it up two, three times, I'll just redo it and come back with the result. Here is what I came up with. This is not the greatest diagram because I didn't actually draw or sketch a converging lens and a diverging lens. So it's a little difficult to conceptualize here, but converging lens, diverging lens. Uh, I gave the converging lens a focal length of three centimeters, so three centimeters from the converging lens to its focal length. I put the object just outside that focal point with an object distance of three and a half centimeters. So the first thing I did was mark the two focal points for the converging lens and draw my ray diagram. Parallel ray refracts through the focal point all the way down here, undeviated ray through the center of the lens, and then a ray through the near focal point which refracts parallel to the optical axis. And I fudged a, I fudged a little bit because I found that the top two rays actually converge somewhere over here, but that my third ray came in like this. So I, uh, I compromised and, and just imagined that the image is uh, the convergence of the rays somewhere in the middle, somewhere between here and here. I went with this point and I drew an inverted image for the first object. I measured its height to be about 12 centimeters. I include the minus sign because it's inverted. And then the tricky part, uh, I purposely chose the diverging lens to have a focal length of only negative two centimeters. So the, the focal points are only two centimeters from the diverging lens because I figured out that that would make my diagram almost fit on one page. Okay, so the tricky part is to determine the principal rays here. Well, I knew that uh, theoretically some ray would have come out of this lens in such a direction that it would pass undeviated through the, the center of the diverging lens and reach the image point. So I went ahead and extended that ray backwards. It's the ray through the middle of the diverging lens, undeviated. And then I figured the ray coming in parallel to the optical axis on its way to the image point, when it gets to the diverging lens, it would diverge as if it came from this focal point. And so I extend that ray backwards and find that it intersects my first ray right about here. Two rays are sufficient to determine the location of the image from the diverging lens. If I wanted to draw a third ray, uh, it would have to involve the second focal point. And that ray is not even possible to draw. I believe it would be off the page. So I didn't even attempt that one. But let's, let's see now. Uh, what the thin lens equation gives us. Before I do that, I suppose I should review the measurements that I made. I found that this first image, the image from the first lens, was about 21 centimeters from the converging lens. Well, if the distance between the lenses is 12 centimeters, I drew them so that they were 12 centimeters apart, that means that the distance between the diverging lens and the image from the first lens, which is now the object for the second lens, is about nine centimeters. Since it's on the, quote, wrong side of the lens, the object distance, S2, for the diverging lens would be negative nine. Lastly, um, how far does the image show up from the diverging lens? Honestly, it's more like 2.4, but I just called it two and a half centimeters with the minus sign. It's a virtual image. So I called S2 prime, negative two and a half. And lastly, what's the height here? Uh, I came up with something like three and a half centimeters, roughly. I round it to the nearest half centimeters and it's upright. So I gave it a plus sign. Let's confirm these numbers, hopefully with the thin lens equation. The first thing I did was solve for 
the image distance for the first lens, one over F minus one over object distance, take the reciprocal, 21 centimeters. So I got lucky this time that my measured image distance for the first lens corresponds to the result that comes out of the thin lens equation. Now, 21 centimeters minus that 12 lens to lens distance would be the nine centimeters. So I, I went ahead and used the number um, negative nine as my object distance for the second lens. That's what we call S2. Plug that value for the object distance into the thin lens equation using the new focal length. And remember my focal length is negative two for the diverging lens. And I find that the image that comes out of the diverging lens should be 2.57 centimeters from the lens and it's on the left side. It's a virtual image. Look how close that agrees with my measured image distance. I found that this image comes out two and a half centimeters from the diverging lens. According to the thin lens equation, it should be 2.57 centimeters. Great. The last thing to do would be to confirm this final height. Well, the, the image that comes out of the first lens should be the magnification of the first lens times the object height. I went with an object height of two centimeters. I wrote that right here. So take the image distance that we calculated, that was the 21 centimeters, divided by the given object distance, multiply by the original object height. My image, which comes out of the first lens, should be 12 centimeters, and it should be inverted. I did, in fact, measure a height of 12 centimeters upside down. That image height for the first lens becomes the object height, H1 prime. Uh, did I do that right? H1, no. Yes. Uh, off to the side here, I'll note that H2, the height of the object for the second lens, well, that's the same as the height of the image from the first lens. So that would be H1 prime. Yeah. So what I'm really doing is saying H2 prime is the magnification of the second lens times H2, but H2 is the same as the image height from the first lens. Okay, well, I plug in the image, calculated image distance and object distance for the second lens times the, again, this is the height of the object for the second lens, but the object for the second lens is the same as the image of the first lens. That's the 12 centimeters. And I find that the final image should have a height of 3.4 centimeters. Remember, I measured it to be three and a half. So I got fairly lucky in this instance. And you know what? I think I'm just going to go ahead and say right now, I will not give you a problem on the exam where your object from the first lens shows up on quote the wrong side of the second lens. It's just a little too difficult. So I, I don't know if you have problems like that in your homework. You may. It's good practice, but it'll be much easier if you're image from the first object shows up on the incoming light side for the second lens. Now, why would one want to put a converging and diverging lens together into a, a compound lens system? Well, evidently, it's fairly common in a lot of optical systems, and here's the reason why. When you look at the thin lens equation, Very often your object is considerably, at a considerably greater distance from the lens than the focal length. So if, I think your book suggests something like 10 focal lengths. If the object distance is greater than 10 focal lengths away, well that would mean that one over S is one over 10 F. That would be much less than one over F, or maybe 20 focal lengths. I think they go with 20. By the time you're 10 to 20 focal lengths away from the lens, this contribution to the equation is negligible. You can, you can just disregard it. And in that case, S prime would be roughly equal to F. We already kind of knew that, right? If you've got a lens and your object is real far away, your rays come in almost parallel. This is not a great uh, drawing. If, if I put this twice as far away, these rays would start to look roughly parallel. And then we know that they're going to converge 
at a distance that we call the focal length. Again, this, this is not quite the focal length because these lines are not parallel. If they were coming in parallel, like from the sun, then the image distance would be at the focal point. Okay, let's plug that into this formula. Um, the image height H prime is magnification times object height. But we know that the magnification can be calculated using negative S prime over S. <clears throat> now the, uh, the image distance we just determined is basically equal to the focal length if your object is fairly far away. So I'm gonna say approximately equal to negative F over S H. And that is a, as a result worth considering. This formula is valid as long as S is greater than, this time I'll go with 20 focal lengths. And the, the part of this formula that you should focus on, no pun intended, would be the numerator. This equation says that you can change the size of the image. This could be an image on a piece of photographic film. It could be an image on a projector screen. It could be an image on the CCD of a digital camera. The size of your image is proportional to the focal length. So if you had some means of changing the focal length without moving the object, you could change the size of the image. We looked at one problem where you can change the index of a fraction of a lens because it's got electro-optic properties. That also would change the focal length. Um, you could swap the, the lens out for another one that has a different focal length, or you can use this compound lens system that your book discusses. So let me pull up PowerPoint here. But just try to memorize that. If you were to double the focal length of a camera system, you would double the height of the image, provided that your object is relatively far away. Okay, here is the relevant image from your book. Oh, not this one. Right, yeah. They have a converging lens next to a diverging lens. Well, we know what converging lenses do. They focus the rays to a point, but before these rays, can actually reach the point where they converge. They strike the diverging lens and see how they're kind of bent outwards a little bit. So their convergence is delayed in space. As, your, uh, as the diagram says, this, is, this point here is where they would converge without the diverging lens, but they diverge a little bit later. And just take a look at the difference between these two situations, left and right. If you put the diverging lens much closer to the converging lens, I would think of it this way. The rays leaving the converging lens don't have as much time to converge. They're bent before they can converge significantly. And so they, they converge at a much later time if you're imagining them traveling from left to right. So the, the takeaway here is the closer you put those two together, the longer the effective focal length. You can regard the two of these lenses together as a single lens. It's a lens system, but replace those with a single lens that has one effective focal length. And these two over here, which are closer together, they have a longer effective focal length. Evidently, a lot of cameras use this, this basic setup. Your book points out that in older cameras, when you're focusing, not just older cameras, but um, even modern digital cameras, <clears throat> you can see the barrel of the, the lens move in and out as it's focusing. And what you're really doing is changing the distance between two lenses. And in actuality, I think often this, even this single converging lens is a bunch of lenses stacked together for improved optical quality. So it's not quite as simple as just one converging lens and one diverging lens, but we can think about it that way for now. Um, so this, this longer focal length here would tend to produce an image on the back of the, the camera, which is where the, the film would be if it were an older camera or where the CCD chip is in a modern camera, as you lengthen the focal length or increase the focal length, this image would get taller. So there, there's one very good reason for putting a converging and a diverging lens next to each other. So I'm gonna take a moment and, and pick some numbers that we can use to actually analyze this with the thin lens equation.
So here's a very similar to example 35.1, the very first example in chapter 35 on page 996. In that example, they have a diverging lens followed by a converging lens. But in this case, I'm going with uh, the pictures in the, in the uh, PowerPoint slide. There's an object over here, which I've placed 30 centimeters from this converging lens. And the converging lens has a focal length of two centimeters. So F1, I've marked the focal length on the opposite side of this converging lens. But in between the converging lens and its focal length, or its focal point, is a diverging lens. So this is all schematic. I haven't actually used ray tracing. But suppose the image formed by the converging lens would have been right here had it not been for the diverging lens. Because the diverging lens is there, these incoming rays will be bent outward slightly, and it'll require a greater distance for them to converge to a point. That's what I'm expecting to happen. So I, I chose numbers hoping that, that the result looks like this picture. So two things, let's find where the final image is, which would be the location of this point. I'm calling that S2 prime. That's the image that comes out of the diverging lens. This would be the image that comes out of the converging lens, which serves as the object for the second lens. And again, because the, because the object is on the right side of the diverging lens, we have to give it a negative sign for the object distance. Okay, well, this is just repeated application of the thin lens equation. Let me first find the location of this point with respect to the converging lens. I'll say, S1 prime. Well, we'd have to go one over the focal length minus one over the object distance. Take the reciprocal of that. Let me do this in my calculator. <clears throat> so one divided by two centimeters minus one divided by 30 centimeters. It equals, take the reciprocal button. And I find that the image that comes out of the first lens is 2.143 centimeters to the right of the converging lens. So this, this flower or bus, whatever you're photographing, it would show up a little over two centimeters to the right of the first lens, but just one and a half centimeters away is the diverging lens. So you won't actually get an image here. Those rays coming from the converging lens, they will be bent outwards before they are able to converge at this point, 2.143 centimeters to the right. Okay, well, Let's take the 2.143 and subtract one and a half to figure out the distance from the diverging lens to this now, uh, I'm gonna call it the object point for the second lens. So subtract 1.5, Okay, that's going to be my object distance for the diverging lens. 0.64, I'll round it to 0.643. I'll keep it in memory in my calculator, but it's up to me to add the minus sign because I know that it's, since it's on the right side of the diverging lens, that's gotta be a, a negative object distance. Okay, I'll store this in memory. Now that we know the object distance for the diverging lens and we know its focal length, I chose the focal length to be slightly less in magnitude than that for the converging lens. Let's use the thin lens equation again to find the image distance. So one over focal length two minus one over object distance two. Take the reciprocal of that. Here's where you have to be careful. This is a negative focal length. Okay. One divided by 1.8 negative minus one divided by the memory that I stored or the number that I stored in memory equals, interesting, came out to one. Now I found that suspicious the first time. So I, I checked it a different way and I get the same numbers. Well, I still have to take the reciprocal of that. One over one, of course, is one. I think it's just a coincidence that things worked out this way here. I found that a little odd at first, but it probably has something to do with my choice of focal lengths. Okay, so now we know that the image, notice it's positive, that's a real image. The image that comes out of the diverging lens is to the right of the diverging lens, and it's only one centimeter to the right. So I didn't actually draw this diagram faithfully. It doesn't really represent um, what's going on here. First of all, let's ask ourselves, where is this point? I think we already determined that, right? That's 0.643. 
So the, the rays would have converged here without the diverging lens, but with the diverging lens, they converge one centimeter to the right of the diverging lens. So instead of 0 0.643, it's more like one, somewhere over here. That's actually a little, that's gonna be a little bit before the focal length, because the focal length here is 1.8 centimeters. And I'm finding that uh, it's only one centimeter from the diverging lens. So it's gonna be between here and here. Okay, Not, so my picture, once again, my picture doesn't accurately reflect everything about this problem, but it's, it does give us qualitatively a feel for how the diverging lens changes the place where the rays converge. So what about the second part? Find the focal length of the equivalent lens. Your book suggests imagining an equivalent lens halfway between these two. So just replace those two lenses by a single lens. And first let's find the new object distance. So for the equivalent lens, the object distance S, well, this distance is 1.5. If we take half of that, 0.75 is this distance. Add to that the 30 centimeters. Well, 0.75 plus 30, of course, that's 30.75. So the object, which is 30 centimeters to the left of this lens, would be 30.75 centimeters from this effective lens, which is halfway between the two. And the image distance now, well, we just found, and I forgot to write down the answer here, um, but dot, 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 we found that S2 prime is one centimeter. The actual image shows up one centimeter to the right of the diverging lens. Add another 0.75 centimeters. That would be 1.75 centimeters to the right. Object distance from the equivalent lens, which is midway between the two. Image distance from the equivalent lens, which is midway between the two. And now we can easily solve for the focal length. One over F is the sum of the reciprocals. So the equivalent focal length would be, I'm curious, how does it compare to the two actual focal lengths? Let's see here, 30.75 reciprocal plus 1.75 reciprocal. Take the square, uh, excuse me, not the square root, the reciprocal once more. Hmm. 1.66 all around. Okay, so it's a number which is less than either of these numbers in terms of absolute value. Now I find that result a little odd because the whole point of putting the diverging lens uh, in sequence with the converging lens is to change the focal length, to increase it effectively. And I found that the focal length of this equivalent lens is actually uh, shorter than the focal length of the converging lens alone. I was expecting it to be longer. So perhaps that has something to do with the fact that the object was only 30 centimeters away and not farther. If you find an error in my calculation, please let me know. I think I figured out what would improve the, the result of this calculation. If we want to get this this uh, compound optical system to behave like a single lens that really does have a long focal length. It turns out that the, the image from the first lens, the image from the converging lens, needs to be relatively close to this focal point. And that can be accomplished by moving these two closer together. So I'm gonna rework this problem, just the numbers, not the, I'm not gonna redraw the diagram, but let's instead change this to 0.5 centimeters. In other words, if we were to scoot the diverging lens another centimeter towards the converging lens, that would put this focal point much closer to the image location from the first lens. Now, previously I did a ray diagram for a converging lens followed by a diverging lens, and we found that the final image was actually on this side. Right now we're, we're hoping that we get a final image on this side. 
So the requirement is that S2 prime, the image distance for the second lens, be a positive number. Now, if you look at the thin lens equation, one over image distance is one over F minus one over S. And we are requiring that S prime come out as a positive number. That means the reciprocal would also be a positive number. So this is supposed to be positive. Let's rearrange this inequality. That says one over F must be greater than one over S. Now think for a moment. For a diverging lens, the focal length is negative, and so is the object distance in this case. Remember, our, the object is on the other side of the lens. We're considering that to be a negative object distance. So both of these, both of these numbers are negative. Now, if I said negative three is greater than negative five, for instance, that is true. Negative three is greater than negative five, but when I take the absolute value of both sides, three is actually less than five. So if I'm going to take the absolute value of both sides here, I would have to switch the sign of the, or the direction of the inequality. So one over absolute value of F is less than one over the absolute value of S. So now the denominators are both positive numbers. Now think for a moment, wouldn't the absolute value of F need to be a bigger number if its reciprocal comes out to be less than one over the absolute value of S. Uh, for instance, one tenth is less than one fifth because 10 is greater than five. So this is another way of saying that the absolute value of the focal length has to be greater than the absolute value of the object distance. Right, all of this to say that the the image that comes out of the first lens, the converging lens, this distance needs to be less than this distance in order to produce a real final image over here. When you think back to uh, in the earlier video, or was that the same video? That was the same video earlier in the video. The reason we got a final image that was over here, I believe, was because um, this final, or excuse me, the, the uh, image that came out of the first lens was outside the focal length of the diverging lens. Okay, so it, it needs to be somewhere in here. The, the image that comes out of the converging lens needs to be somewhere in here, but I find that the closer it is to the focal point, the farther away the final image is. So I have now switched this to delta, or this delta x now is 0.5. The separation between the lenses is 0.5. So let's just redo the calculation with these improved numbers. I'm still gonna use these focal lengths and this object distance. And just like before, the image comes out at one over F1 minus one over S1 reciprocal. So I take one over two centimeters minus one over 30 centimeters, take the reciprocal of that. It still comes out at 2.143 centimeters to the right of this converging lens. But if, if it's 2.143 from the lens and these are 0.5 apart, then my object distance for the second lens would be 2.143 minus 0.5. I have to subtract the distance between the lenses. And remember, this is supposed to be a negative number for the diverging lens because the object is on the other side, the, the wrong side, so to speak, 2.143 minus 0.5, okay, so negative 1.643. That's the object distance for the diverging lens. It's still a negative number, but this time it's larger. In fact, do you see how this number in absolute value is close to the focal length of the diverging lens in absolute value? It's still less than, it's still inside the focal point as it needs to be. But now I can say, um, let's see here, S2 prime, would be one over F2 minus one over S2. Take the reciprocal of that. Don't forget these are both negative numbers now. So one divided by 1.8 negative minus one divided by 1.643 with a minus sign. Okay, take the reciprocal of that. And now the image is way out at 18.84, I will call it from the diverging lens. So much more like the picture that I originally drew. The final image would be way out here at 18 something 
centimeters from the diverging lens. So now we can go back and check the, the effective focal length. If we treat these two as a single lens midway between the two. So for the equivalent lens, it's supposed to be a period right there, equivalent lens. Now the object distance is, well, if these two are half a centimeter apart, then the distance from the leftmost lens to this equivalent lens in the middle would only be a quarter of a centimeter. So I'm gonna take the 30 centimeters to the object and add just 0.25. The object distance is now 30.25 centimeters from this equivalent lens. And the image distance, well, this is how far the image shows up from the diverging lens. We have to add that extra 0.25 centimeters. 18.84 plus 0.25, okay, 19.09 centimeters. Great, now we can solve for the effective focal length. It would be some of the reciprocals. Don't forget to take the reciprocal, let's see. 30.25 reciprocal plus 19.09 reciprocal equals, take the reciprocal, 11.7 centimeters. Okay, that sounds more like it. A focal length of 11.7 centimeters between this effective lens and where the image actually shows up. That's a much longer focal length than the focal length of the converging lens by itself. That was the whole point, to put these two uh, in sequence and get them to behave like a single converging lens with a much longer focal length. So all you'd have to do is slide one of these back and forth, change this quantity that I'm calling delta x, to change your effective focal length. And that's how the zoom lens in a camera works.